with your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's the local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go on this Monday evening in the city. Six o'clock straight up, which means it is time for another live and all-new edition of Real Talk Memphis. Glad to have you with us. I am your program host. My name is Chip Washington, the humble one. Glad to have you along for the ride. Um, we had a little rain this afternoon, depending on, like, the where you are and, uh, you know, and part of the city and this and that. So a couple of these Splash and dash showers, uh, which were not unexpected today. Uh, greater chances of rain tomorrow and on Wednesday. But uh, overall, very nice day today. Temperatures in the 80s, and I hope you had a chance to get out and enjoy it. So how was your weekend? You have a good weekend? Uh, you know, it only, they only last about 20, 30 minutes. So, you know, I hope you <laughs> had an opportunity to get out uh, and, and enjoy yourself. I know Lola did. Lola was out of town. She, she told me... Um, that uh, Chip, it was very strange to go to another city in Alabama and 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 not worry about anything. It was everything was nice and peaceful and and calm. And she uh, she hosted a birthday party for for a young man. He was one. He's one. He's one. So that's that's, that's, that's pretty young. But anyway, had a good time. So listen, the gang's all here. You know, we've been kind of in and out here the last couple of weeks. Folks are getting away and uh, spending some quality time. And everybody's back tonight. And I'm glad to have you with us. So uh, we have a good show for you tonight. I, I will uh, detail the lineup in just a couple of minutes. Uh, just so you know, uh, this fine piece of radio broadcasting, you always ask, how do you get this fine piece of radio broadcasting? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, any number of ways. We're on live right now. 91.7 on your FM dial. That would be WYXR. You can also catch us on the uh, WYXR app. Uh, we are available on the TuneIn app. Just uh, put in Real Talk Memphis and uh, our show should pop up. Uh, we are going to be live streaming on Facebook tonight. So you can catch us there if that's your preferred choice of uh, of how you find us. And when the show is posted in the next day or so, uh, you can catch us on YouTube a little later on this week. And uh, as we are a podcast, you did know we were a podcast, correct? You can catch us wherever it is you get your podcast once the show is posted. Okay, all clear? All hearts and minds clear? Very good. Uh, in terms of the show tonight, uh, I think we have a good show for you tonight. Our first guest, uh, who will join me in just a couple of minutes, uh, is uh, our Shelby County District Attorney. His name is Mr. Steve Mulroy, and uh, he's actually in studio with us tonight, uh, live and local and everything, like me. He's live and local, and he'll be here in just a few minutes to talk about a few things. Uh, a little bit later on, we will be speaking with State Representative Karen Camper, uh, and uh, she has a few things to talk about. You know, there was a, there's a redevelopment project, uh, ongoing uh, project supposedly in Whitehaven. Uh, phase two of that project was supposed to get started, but somehow the money just 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 disappeared. We don't know what happened to it. The state doesn't know what happened to it. We'll talk to her about that. And, of course, uh, some of the latest doings uh, in the world of uh, politics uh, uh, as well. And a little bit later on, we will be speaking with uh, Yolanda Fent. Uh, she is the housing supervisor of Hope House. And uh, Hope House is an organization that helps folks transition, get on their feet, folks who have dealt with uh, uh, HIV, poverty. They received a very large Grant Award uh, here, over a million dollars, as a matter of fact. So we'll talk to her about that. 
talk about the organization, uh, what they do, and how this money will help them do even more for our community. So that is our guest list uh, for tonight. Uh, this, uh, of course, today, uh, as we do each and every Monday, we celebrate you. Uh, if you have celebrated a birthday, whether it be today or yesterday or maybe one coming up this week, this is the shout out. This is how we uh, uh, salute you to the world and let everybody know we're glad you're still around. But we can't do that till I say hit it, Bran. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Going out to the following folk. Happy birthday to Randy Taylor. Uh, happy birthday going out to. Let me see you. Hang on. I got to get a close up here. Uh, Tonga Murphy celebrating her birthday today, as is Gail Perry. On Terry Jameson, Marie Alexander, Nicole Brooks, and a very special happy birthday to somebody we all know here. And when I say all of us here, uh, Brand, Nicole, and myself, uh, our uh, general manager, station manager, Robbie Grant, celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, Robbie, uh, celebrating today. And a special shout out uh, to a young lady. Uh, in Los Angeles, California. Now, you know, my daughter lives out there. And when I went to go visit her during the holidays, uh, I happened to meet this this this, this young woman. A very, very nice uh, lady. Um, to understand her health has not been quite the best, but I wanted to, my daughter wanted me to give her a special shout out. Her name is Mr. Joanne. So, Miss Joanne, uh, I want you to know uh, that I still remember you. It was wonderful meeting you. Uh, and uh, I'm wishing you and praying for your health, your strength, and your recovery. We hope everything turns out okay for you. Uh, that is a look at uh, the birthdays, and uh, thank you very much, Brent. Uh, we all, you know, we we hope that, uh, you know, we'll all be around next year as we celebrate your next trip around the sun. So uh, in the news and notes, not, not a whole lot happened yesterday except the entire uh, political world was shook up in terms of the presidential election. <laughs> uh, 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 of course, the current president, uh, Joe Biden, have decided that he was going to step away. Uh, and um, he's going to continue being the president until his term is up next year. Uh, but he has anointed his vice president, Kamala Harris, uh, as the uh, next uh, candidate for the Democratic nomination for president of the United States. Uh, that shook up a whole lot of things yesterday, believe that. And, of course, we have a little over 100 days left to the election. Uh, Kamala Harris, just a short time ago, uh, spoke at the campaign headquarters. Joe Biden happened to call into the headquarters to thank them for all their work and said that he was going to be continuing to work and push hard to get Kamala elected as the next and first uh, female uh, president of the United States in this country. She is very... You know what? Uh, I've already heard some summary from some of the news folks saying uh, Donald Trump, if I were Donald Trump, I'd be a bit, a bit concerned because uh, Kamala Harris is a pretty sharp woman and she's not uh, Joe Biden. And uh, this ought to be very, very interesting. So she's fired up and ready to go. And I think given the fact that she's raised over $81 million in 24 hours, kind of lets all of us know that somebody out there is fired up uh, in terms of her, uh, you know, uh, uh, hopeful nomination. Now all she's got to do is pick a vice president, uh, show a running mate, and get everybody all psyched up. And uh, I would love to be uh, in Chicago, wherever they're holding the Democratic uh, National Convention, I would love to be in that room. There's going to be a lot of excitement. It's going to be off the chain there. So, And that happens in another month. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, is officially in uh, and headed for, hopefully, uh, the big chair in the White House. So we will keep a close eye on that. Uh, meantime, uh, the uh, purported assassination attempt of Donald Trump uh, is still front and center as the Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle uh, had to sit before Congress today and explained where the failures were. And there apparently were many. Uh, they just, they ate her up today. They really did. And most, if not all of them, said that she should be fired immediately on the spot. Uh, calls for her firing have grown louder. And I just don't think this, and for me, and this is just my opinion, uh, I think it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when this is going to happen. Because she said, quote, unquote, we failed. That, those words came out of her mouth today. We failed miserably in protecting this man. So we'll see what happens next on that. 
Uh, let me see here. We already talked about uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, a bit closer to home. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are concerned about the violence that we see in our streets. Um, we had a couple of episodes on Beale Street uh, over the weekend. One gentleman was killed. Uh, two people were shot. The other one uh, shot in the leg. I guess he's going to be okay. Uh, these were as a result of some arguments that happened uh, between uh, individuals. You know, we don't settle these things like, you know, like grown people anymore. There's always weapons being pulled out and always things like that happen. So, again, uh, the investigation into that continues. There was an incident in Indianola, uh, Mississippi, uh, sometime, I think either, uh, I want to say late Saturday night or early into Sunday, where three people were dead. Uh, after a shooting, and 16 people were shot and wounded. Now, we don't have a lot of information. The Indian Nola law enforcement folks hadn't really gave out much in terms of information, but that's a pretty big deal. And uh, wanted to, uh, you know, we're going to wait and find out what the information yields from all of that. Uh, but three dead and at least 16 people shot and injured uh, in an incident that happened in Indianola, Mississippi, over the weekend. And finally, before we get out of here, I'm, I'm a little sad tonight because I found out yesterday on Facebook, of all places, that a, a friend of mine um, uh, has transitioned. And a lot of you probably knew him, too. He was a member of the WYXR family for a while, Carl Roberts, uh, who was uh, on every Sunday afternoon here for a couple of hours. Uh, playing that uh, smooth jazz. I, I love the contemporary jazz. Well, Carl's been around for a long time in a reference to the uh, radio business. Uh, he was also known as the chief party rocker back in the days of uh, V101. Uh, well, he uh, transitioned uh, on Friday uh, after a long uh, battle with cancer. I don't know how old Carl was, but I can tell you that he was a prime individual a wonderful human being. He used to always, uh, he, he'd come down here on Monday evening sometime and he'd see me say, Big Chipper. He'd always call me Big Chipper. And, and he always had a smile on his face and very encouraging. Uh, so we're praying for uh, his family. We're praying for his friends and his colleagues and all that knew him best. Carl Roberts, uh, rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we are going to uh, kick off this broadcast with a live in-studio guest. Uh, D.A. Steve Morroy is joining us. This is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. You know who you are. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Programming on WYXR is brought to you by a grant from Arts Memphis, who has invested $94 million into our local arts community to teach, uplift, unite, and engage Memphians of all ages and zip codes. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening in the city. Chip with you. Glad to have you with us uh, as well. Now, uh, for those of you who uh, like to check this show out uh, on uh, Facebook Live, we are live streaming tonight. Uh, if you look and see, uh, things are a little bit different here in terms of the, uh, the setup. Why? Because we have a special guest in studio. Uh, we are very happy to welcome our district attorney, 
uh, Shelby County District Attorney, Mr. Steve Mulroy. And uh, it's great to see you, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm hanging in there. Thank you, Chip. Good to see you, too. Absolutely that. So, you know, we, we want to talk about things. We want to, first of all, I always like to take your temperature as to as to kind of, uh, you know, your perspective, your perception as to where things are in, mm-hmm. in the city and community and, and based on what you're doing uh, in, in terms of crime. There's always issues with that. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, how do you think, where are things, uh, as far as your agenda, is concerned uh, these days. Yeah, well, thanks for asking and happy to be here. I mean, (coughs) public safety has been and has to continue to be our absolute number one priority, right? Full stop. We have to do everything we can to keep people safe. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, violent crime had been rising steadily in Shelby County for over the last decade Mm -hmm. to the point where we were number one in the country in Memphis for violent crime per capita for a couple of years before I took office. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it is, uh, it is a real problem. Um, we need to make sure that people are safe and that they feel safe. Uh, people have a right to, you know, be able to pump gas at night. They have a right to be able to drive on the interstate and not feel like they're in some sort of, you know, NASCAR speedway. Um, and, and that's what we're working on. Uh, there's a number of initiatives that I've been doing, uh, here at the, with the DA's office that I think are putting us on the right track. One of them you may have heard of is our V11 initiative. It's a fast track on violent crime. Yes. So we've identified 11 offenses that are either violent or associated with violence that we are giving special priority because we've been refocusing on violent crime. And special priority means we're moving them through the system faster, we're being tougher on bail, and we're going the extra mile in investigations like monitoring jail calls. And we've been having good success with that. We've also been trying to do a lot more towards um, speeding up the criminal justice process in general. Yeah. Um, You know, the number of jury trials that we've done this year to date, we're on track if present trends continue to be like 60% more than the year before. And and that's because we've just been making more of an effort on not allowing the defense attorneys to continually postpone cases, you know, and just kick the can down the road. Um, And we've had great cooperation with the judges on that. They have been excellent about, you know, being ready to transfer cases among themselves to make sure that we, you know, can always try them and we don't have to keep postponing them. So that's a lot of what we're doing. One other thing I'll mention real quick is, you know, we're focusing on violent crime and that's gotta be our number one priority. Right. But there are nonviolent crimes that we need to be focusing on too. I mean, you know, a lot of people out there may or may not think that they're at risk tomorrow of getting killed, but they're all worried about having the car broken into in the parking lot or, yeah. or yeah. having their car stolen out of their driveway, yes. right? Yes. And so we've got to focus on those two types of offenses too. And um, we're doing something special in our juvenile court unit about this, about these two types of offenses, car theft and car break-ins. And I want to pause here and mention the vast majority of crimes and the vast majority of violent crimes are done by people over 18. So we don't want to demonize our youth, right? You know, right. small percentage of teens are responsible for a lot of for this. For a great deal, yeah, sure. But when it comes to those two crimes, car break-ins and car thefts, there is a disproportionate number of teens that are involved, mm-hmm. which is why we're taking a look at it in juvenile court. And we've got this cars unit that we set up, and uh, it's for people who may have picked up a car break-in or car theft charge, nonviolent, haven't yet graduated to the violent stuff, haven't yet moved on to carjacking or robbery or things like that. And that's the trajectory, right? That's all too common that we're sure. trying to interrupt. Sure. And so for that, we, 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 we take those cases and we put them in a special docket and we do kind of an intensive supervision of those, uh, of those kids. Um, we sign them up with uh, Memphis Allies uh, program with Youth Villages, this Youth Switch program where there's intensive supervision, sure. all kinds of other requirements, and try to get that trajectory changed so that they're away from that uh, that trajectory. And of course, if not, then you know we have to prosecute them the normal way. So based on that, because there's a couple of other things I want to ask you about, but based on that, one of the big issues we hear all the time is the involvement of, or in many cases, the lack of involvement with our parents, with right. our young people. Right. You talk about that a lot, yep. and a lot of us do. Yep. How do we How do we change that? Yep. How do we change? How do we get parents to understand that a 12, 13, 14 year old out here committing crimes yep. uh, can lead to nothing but uh, danger? So some of it is, you know, you put your uh, finger right on it. It's it's a big problem with the, you know, we've got to get the parents more involved. Um, you probably remember those TV commercials that said. It's 10 p.m. 
Do you know where your children oh, yeah. are? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I, I sometimes think we maybe want to bring those back because mm-hmm. you know we need to wake people up to the responsibility. The the the, ki- the parents are responsible for making sure the kids aren't running around late at night. Right. They're responsible for making sure they go to school and stay in school. Right. Right. They need to stay in class and stay out of trouble. Now, some of that's you know the parents. Some of that's the pastors. Some of that's our culture. Um, so you know, DA can't by himself change that, but. Let me tell you what we can do in our office. We have been having some conversations with juvenile court judge Sugarman um, about some of these cases where the parents are either actually cooperating with the kids, like dropping them off for, for the you know for the, the the car break-ins or whatever, sure, um, or just are not even doing the bare minimum of trying to keep their kids in school. And in some of those cases, you know, we'll have to go after the parents. Um, and, you know, we don't want to do it lightly. We want to make sure we're sensitive to the fact that there are a lot of parents out there that are doing their best, but they just can't control their teens, right? Right, right. But for the ones that aren't even doing the basics, um, they need to have their feet held to the fire when they need to be brought into court and then need to be some consequences. Uh, let me shift gears here because <clears throat> recently, and a lot of folks talk about this all the time, bail. This whole yep. system of bail yep, and yep. who gets bail, who doesn't get bail, and the whole yep. nine yards. And, and recently you... You had an initiative uh, that uh, you, you you were you were sort of fronting in reference to yeah. uh, uh, the uh, judicial commissioners, yeah. which for people who do not know, they are the ones that right. that, that recommend bail. Am right. I correct? In Absolutely that? correct. So you're saying that they need more information on the front end, yes. uh, based on some of these crimes, to be able to uh, to be able to maybe negotiate, you know, maybe a stronger bail or a higher bail. That's right. Based on certain crimes, talk about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and thanks for that question. You know, there's a lot of public misunderstanding out there. The DA's office does not set bail. Bail is set in the first instance by these judicial commissioners who are appointed by the county commission. Um, And then if the person is, uh, without any involvement of our office, and then if the person's still in custody three days later, 72 hours after arrest, Mm. then, and only then, does the DA's office get involved. And even then, all we can do is make a recommendation. The judge makes the final decision. But uh, there have been, and I want to be clear here, the, um, the vast majority of people who are out on bail don't commit another crime while they're out on bail. And it's very rare for them to reoffend violently. But there have been too many cases where the bail was set too low and the person, either based on their criminal record or the seriousness of the offense charged, should not have been let out. Right. And sometimes they'll reoffend, including violently, and we need to do everything we can to keep that number of instances down. So one of the things we can do is to cooperate with the judicial commissioners and try to get them the best information they can to make a decision, just like you were saying, Chip. So I took a look at it and realized that the pieces, the, the information that is given to the judicial commissioners might tell them the number of offenses, the number, you know, one felony, two misdemeanors, but wouldn't really go into detail in writing right. about what kinds. Was it aggravated assault? Was it marijuana? Was it trespassing? Was it simple assault? Um, and they need to know that. Uh, now, it's possible for them to get that information over the phone. Uh, but we thought there was no substitute for having it all laid out in writing at the time they make the decision. Right. So thanks to the cooperation of county pretrial services who really stepped up and the judicial commissioners who were also stepping up, we're going to make sure that there is a full written printout of all of the charges, the date, the final disposition, all of that uh, attached to their form so they can look at that in writing when they make their bail decision. So uh, and having said so, having said that, uh, you know there, there's there there was a little pushback from the uh, from the lead uh, judicial commissioner saying that this has been something that's been in effect for a long time uh, now in terms of accessing that type of information. Is that true? It's true that they can access it over the phone, but we believe that there have been a number of instances of late where we don't think perhaps they were accurately or adequately taking into account that uh, the the criminal history, mm. and so. Mayor Harris and I decided that pretrial services, which reports to Mayor Harris, needs to provide all of that in writing. Mm. There needs to be a record so we can hold everybody accountable, and the record needs to show all of the details of the criminal history, rather than just leaving it to them on a case-by-case basis to get it by phone. There's one more thing I want to ask you about, because this has bothered me for a very long time, and maybe a lot of other folks too. This perceived 
interference uh, in local uh, affairs uh, by the state uh, house. Yep. Uh, of course, uh, you know, a, a friend of yours, uh, Senator Brent Taylor, uh, seems uh, pretty determined to, to try to get you removed from office. And, and of course, he's asked uh, uh, Cameron Sexton yep. is, yep. is going to bring this up. First of all, where did this come from and, 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 and why, why, why are we dealing with this? Well, you know, I think it's pure politics, plain and simple. Um, you know, uh, I'm an easy target. And uh, I think, you know, it's a way to get press and clicks and likes, um, you know, and play to their right wing base. Um, it's very partisan. Uh, and, you know, it's never been done in the history of Tennessee. Uh, and, you know, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to portray me as soft on crime. When if you listen to anything I've just said over the last few minutes, I think you'd think that I'm anything but. Uh, I'm interested in criminal justice reform, but we're also prosecuting the cases every day, including the violent cases. Um, so there's really nothing to it. And, you know, and Chip, there was a great article, first in MLK 50, and then later on the front page of the Commercial Appeal by Catherine Burgess. And I urge everyone to take a look at it. Um, uh, it's called, uh, Brent Taylor is determined to oust Steve Mulroy. His effort is rooted in misinformation. If you look yeah, for misinformation and Catherine Burgess, right. she goes step by step through every one of the things he's complained about and then the, 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 the myth and the reality. And there's really nothing there. You, you have to show official misconduct or a complete dereliction of duty. You can't just remove somebody over a policy difference. And there's really just nothing there. And it's a, a real shame because the voters of Shelby County voted for change. We had a whole campaign where we talked about you know, you could lock it up and throw away the key or yeah. you can be smarter. And 56% of the voters in Shelby County said they wanted change, mm -hmm. said they wanted me. And I guess what we have to decide at the end of the day, Chip, is who should decide who should be the Shelby County District Attorney? Should it be Nashville politicians or should it be the voters of Shelby County? This seems to be a trend, though. I mean, this isn't the first time. I mean, they've, they've dipped their toes into several school board and a lot of other issues going on here. Oh, yeah. I do understand that they, they are they are very serious about wanting to make this red, that may make our area red here. In, they said they're going to make Republican Shelby County red. red. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, is, is this this seems like an attempt at it? But but it just seems to me that you know that we ought to have more of a recourse uh, to fight this uh, interference from what happens in Nashville to what we're trying to deal with down here. Am yeah. I wrong in that? Or? No, no, you're not wrong. And there are some legal challenges out there that are possible. But you know, in the meantime. Um, nothing's going to happen until January. So what I'm asking people out there within the sound of my voice is pick up the phone and call your state legislators and uh, especially uh, call Republican state legislators, whether they're your legislator or not, mm -hmm. and tell them that you resent the idea of Nashville overturning an election here in Shelby County. And you're right. They've done it with the airport authority in Nashville. They've done it with. They try to do it with the school board here. Yeah. You know, they won't even let us name our parks. You know, yeah. uh, or decide what statues should be up. Mm. And and I'll also tell you, Chip, this thing about the uh, targeting Democratic district attorneys is happening all across the country. Uh, in Georgia, they passed a special law to uh, to try to get rid of uh, Democratic DAs. Uh, Ron DeSantis in Florida removed two Democratic DAs. There's stuff like this happening in, uh, in Texas and uh, other parts of the country. Larry Krasner in Philadelphia, the Republicans in the legislature tried to impeach him. So this is part of a pattern across the country where, you know, uh, red states don't like it when Democratic DAs get elected and then they try to undo it. It's a dangerous precedent. It really is. Uh, Shelby County District Attorney Steve Monroy, man, it's great to see you. It's great to have you in uh, he here with us uh, tonight in studio. And um, keep on fighting, man. We, we, we're, we're fighting with you. We all need to work. We all need to handle this together. All of us do. Absolutely. We need to be joining hands, not pointing fingers. And that's another reason why this very divisive removal thing is not counter is not productive. We need to all be working together on crime. Thank you, sir, for being with us. We really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, DA Steve Mulroy, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to continue our conversation on this Monday edition of Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
If you like real talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest? or have a guest idea. Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Laser Live returns to the Memphis Museum of Science and History, and this year, WIXR DJs are in the mix. The series features live bands in the AutoZone Sharp Planetarium set to a laser light show. Each show will also showcase a set by a WIXR host, and refreshments from Crosstown Brewing Company will be available. More information can be found at moshmemphis.com. Support for WYXR comes from Tresvent, located in the heart of Memphis at 177 North Highland. Tresvent is where culture and community come together, offering independent living apartments and garden homes ranging from 650 to 3,000 square feet, as well as all levels of care in assisted living, memory support, and a five-star health and rehab center. More information to schedule a tour at tresventmanor.org. Support for WYXR comes from Team Clean. With more than 22 years of experience, Team Clean provides services for home, work, or studio space. Biodegradable cleaning products mixed with common sense and tailored to each client's needs. Estimates and information at weareteamclean.com. Hey, I'm Amy, host of Sonosphere on Monday at 4 p.m., and you're listening to WYXR 91.7 FM Memphis. I'm here today to ask you to further your impact with the station with the city's soul by joining the ranks as a WYXR mid-level donor today. Join us in championing a more inclusive and informed world through the transformative power of the community radio. Visit midlevel.wyxr.org to become a mid-level donor at WYXR, where your investment paves the way for a brighter and more connected future. Mid-level donors enjoy Exclusive benefits such as on-air acknowledgments, VIP passes to raise by SoundFest, and the opportunity to step into the role of a guest DJ. More information about mid-level donations can be found at midlevel.wyxr.org. Support for WYXR comes from Lens Rentals. Based in Memphis and offering nationwide shipping, Lens Rentals offers online rentals for photography, videography, and lighting equipment from a full catalog of brands. More information on services and equipment at lensrentals.com. GonerFest 21 is coming September 26th through the 29th to Rail Garden. The annual musical festival put on by Goner Records brings bands from all over the world to Memphis to celebrate rock and roll in the city where it was born. This year's lineup includes The Ripoffs, John Spencer, Derv Gordon, Builder Space, GT, Rosalie, Split System, and more, live and in person. Tickets and more information at GonerFest.com. Programming on WIXR is brought to you by a grant from Arts Memphis, who has invested $94 million into our local arts community to teach, uplift, unite, and engage Memphians of all ages and zip codes. Shannon and Cecilia here. Do you love stories featuring community changemakers in Memphis? Don't miss Just Bluffin', a feel-good podcast found online in the WIXR Podcast Network. Access all our podcasts at WIXR.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this uh, beautiful Monday evening in the city. A little rain notwithstanding, but a very, very nice evening. Chip with you. Glad to have you along for the ride as well. And uh, my next guest is uh, not a stranger to this uh, broadcast or any of you. Of course, uh, she works very hard uh, on our behalf uh, uh, when the legislative session is uh, in. And uh, we're always happy to have her on the show, uh, State Representative Leader Karen Camper. And Karen, it's good to see you, my friend. How are you doing tonight? 
<laughs> Good to see you too. Doing well. I didn't even realize the rain. So we got a little rain out there. Yeah, yeah. You're a little, little spotty, a little spotty, but not bad. It'll cool things down just a little bit. But listen, I know you're very busy and I and I really appreciate, as always, uh, you taking time to come on and, and talk about uh, some of these issues uh, that so many of us are dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I have to ask you about uh, the the blockbuster uh, national political news that happened yesterday. Uh, I, I know you probably made a comment already, but uh, what do you think? President Biden has stepped away and uh, the vice president is stepping up. What, what, what's your take on all this? Well, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for America. I think that when President Biden made this decision, although I'm a Biden delegate, you know, I was feeling we, you know, I'm with him to the end. Let's go down, you know, all the way with our candidate. Uh, when he decided that he felt this was best for America, I felt the silver lining in all of that was that with Kamala Harris, we again would have an opportunity to make history in this country. And so I'm excited to be a part of that history. I'm excited about the energy that, uh, is going on. I'm just excited right now for the possibilities of hope here in, in, in our country. You know, that's uh, the word, the one word you use there, which is very important, is energy. There seems to be a renewed energy now uh, in this because she's raised over $81 million in 24 hours. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, people are paying attention to this, and this is consequential. It is ex- important. I've talked to you in the past about uh, the importance of voting uh, and how yeah. important it is, especially for people to understand that rules and laws uh, emanate from the uh, those federal elections, those statewide elections, and those federal elections in particular. Right. Talk a little bit about that, how important that is. Well, you know, you hear people all the time say, well, why do we have to do this? Or why is this a law? Or why am I being locked up for this? Or why, why, why? It's because the people that are elected to these positions are proposing these laws, are passing these laws. And you need someone there to, one, fight for you to make sure that your voices are heard, but also vote the way you want them to vote in order to do things that empower our citizens and not have a negative impact on them. So here's an opportunity. Here's a moment where turnout is probably going to be historic. Mm -hmm. And in that historic turnout, we'll have an opportunity to get people in office to do those very things that the everyday Jane and Joe tell me all the time that they care about that they want to happen because what happens at the federal level right now and 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 the vice president's vision for what she wanted to be she's going to need a congress that can help her get it done right she's going to need people in the state house to to implement the things that are coming down from the federal uh level and so now with all this renewed energy this historic moment we're in a position to really change the course of America right now with the down ballot that is going to take place after they come in and vote for her. One of the things that frustrates me the most, we talk all, all the time about the importance of voting on, on, on many levels, uh, is, is this, is this uh, lackadaisical type attitude uh, here in Memphis and Shelby County when it comes to going to the polls. I uh, read today or heard today from a friend of mine um, in reference to the early voting uh, for this uh, upcoming uh, election, uh, we've seen about 17,000, little over 17,000 people show up to uh, early vote uh, compared to 2020, where there were over 37,000 people during this same time period. That lets you know something. What does that tell you as, as, as an elected leader and one who keeps uh, track of things like this? Well, kind of really, if you step back and look at what's happening, generally, in a primary like we have here uh, at the state level, which is pretty much what's on the ballot right now. We have a primary election going on for state representatives and senators. Right. And in primaries, and particularly here, you don't really have that many positions where there's opposition going on within that primary. Mm-hmm. So people feel like, oh, okay, well, he's the only one that, was, you know, whatever, I'm not going to vote. In, 20, uh, in 2020 that you're referring to, you had several other positions on the ballot. And so you had more positions out there for people to come in and have their voices be heard on. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, we have only one county seat that is on the ballot right now. Right, right. Now, uh, two years ago, you had all of the county seats up. Mm -hmm. So you had more people 
out in a general trying to elect the person to those constitutional offices. So that's kind of going on too. And and another thing I talk about with respect to voter turnout uh, is, is it's not all the time that it's apathy. A lot of time it's fatigue because you come three years in a row, then you have who one day off, one, one year off. Then you come back, vote, 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 then you have one year off. So people sometimes a little tired of all of the phone bank calls, a little tired of all of the, the negative mail coming to the house and stuff like that. So you also have fatigue going on. One thing that uh, I have heard recently, and it really disturbs me, uh, but there's no shame in, in that game where your house speaker up there, uh, Cameron Sexton, says, uh, I am determined uh, to make uh, Memphis and Shelby County red. He wants to turn this into a Republican dominated uh, uh, community, just like he did, just like he, you know, just like uh, the Republicans are trying to do all, all across the country and, and just like this state is right now. How do you feel about this he and there's no shame i mean he he had publicly admitted this not too long ago this is very very disturbing and should be disturbing to a lot of people who care about democracy well first off what they've recognized which is true is they can't get elected in these blue areas right and if right. it's primarily a blue if we talk blue and red right and so um they really want the power though of our city. They want the assets of our city. They want to control the future of our cities. So what they, the way that I believe they think they can get that is through the county positions. They are mad that they lost their last two strongholds, which was the district attorney, countywide position, mm -hmm. and juvenile court judge, countywide position. They lost both of them. So they have no no elected leadership at the county level. They don't have a sheriff's office anymore. Don't have none of the constitutional offices. That's why I think with this general sessions court clerk that's on the ballot right now, uh, they're using it as a test bed for what works, what didn't work. If we tie this candidate to a sitting person that we coming after anyway, if we try to demean, you know, uh, more Roy in two years, when those county positions are going to be back up now in two years, you're going to have county mayor up. Remember, Luttrell was the last one right. on the art side. Right. right? Sheriff, you know, Luttrell, what now, Oldham was the last one. Right. All of them are going to be up again for election. That's the red he's talking about. He wants those seats to be Republican because they are sick over the fact that they are no longer in power in leadership here, electedly. In Shelby County. Do you think and we have to fight that? And that's why I say this election, you know, people talk about the numbers and turnout is important, which is what, what you're saying. The numbers are so low, they think they can slide in and get it because we're at home. It's not, you know, it's not many, whatever. We've got to debunk that with the quickness. We have got to turn out, let our voices be heard, secure that seat because if they think they can take off, pick off one. Oh, baby, they coming after the rest of them. Do you think, uh, finally, do you think uh, that uh, that enough people, enough of our people know, yeah, we are a blue city. I mean, we're a majority a minority city. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. but, but I mean, do are people aware of exactly what this plan is? Because they're not making any secret of it up in Nashville. Well, well, I think people are living and in, in, in working and doing things. You know, people are doing what they're doing and they may not be paying attention to it. So we all have to bring attention to it, which is why... Uh, matter of fact, to be honest with you, I I uh, pulled together Senator Agbear and I said, we got to pull together a team to meet on this tonight. So I got that at 7.30. So I'm going to have to jump off and right. go get on that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that we can get the word out to people so they can kind of know what's going on. Yeah, yeah absolutely that. Uh, I tell you what, uh, you know, we're very proud of you, uh, State Representative uh, Karen Camper, always working hard for the people. She's the leader up there at the House. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on it, and I'm sure you will too. And uh, maybe we can get you back on the program down the road uh, once uh, things settle down a little bit and uh, yeah. as we head into 2025. Absolutely. I'd like to come and talk to you uh, at some point about the Win with Black Women group. Absolutely. I know you know about 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 that you know uh i was one of the original 90 
uh, Senator Eggberry and I one of the original 90 one that was created back in 2020. And we've been actively involved in, you know, in, in making sure that black women have representation in the Biden administration. Absolutely. Uh, and, and all of that. And so that call last night with 44,000 plus women on it, you know, we raised $1.5 million in less than five hours wow. uh, for vice president. And so we're, we're starting one here uh, when with black women, Tennessee, um, and our first meeting to be this, uh, this Thursday. So we're going to be galvanizing, energizing everybody everywhere that we can across this state to get prepared for this historic moment. And, um, the election in November. State Representative Karen Camper. Karen, thank you so much for taking the time You're to come welcome. on the show tonight. And we'll talk down the road. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, see you. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one final break uh, on this Monday evening. When we come back, uh, we will continue uh, on uh, this uh, version of uh, Real Talk Memphis. It's been a good show so far. Thank you for all the folks who have uh, chimed in on uh, the uh, Facebook Live line. I see Patricia Rogers and GKP is back tonight. I appreciate him as well. Uh, Marcus Dwayne Belton and, and a few other folks. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Yo, yo, it's Chemist here, host of Computer Noise Radio, and I'm here today to ask you to consider donating to WYXR. When you donate to WYXR, you're no longer merely a listener. You're a vital part of our WYXR community. Becoming a member is incredibly valuable for community radio, allowing us to budget, plan, and increase the ways we serve Memphis. Join us in shaping the future of local radio now at wyxr.org slash donate. Connect with Memphis on WYXR. We offer sponsorship opportunities that expose your brand to our loyal listeners who value local arts, culture, and music. Support public radio and be part of our community. Explore more at wyxr.org slash sponsorship. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening as we roll along. Uh, been a great show so far. Glad you have uh, decided to uh, take a few minutes to be with us uh, this evening, as is my next guest. Uh, this organization, uh, many of you may have not have heard of the Hope House uh, and the fine work that they do uh, to, 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 to uh, help so many in our community. Uh, but they were the recipient of a major grant award, which is going to help them do even more positive work in our community and i'm very happy to have on the show tonight yolanda fent and yolanda uh is the housing supervisor for hope house and, y and uh, yolanda it's great to see you welcome to the show how you doing tonight great chip i'm doing fine and you and thank you for having me absolutely that doing well thank you so much and thank you for being here uh yolanda for people who don't know give us a rundown of the hope house and uh, some of the fine work you do in our community um well um we try to improve um, the quality of life for individuals and uh, families affected by HIV and that are in poverty. Um, some of the things that we offer are counseling, of course. Um, we have a food pantry. We have a daycare. We have a preschool. We have housing. Um, and we also have grants that help individuals with utility and rental assistance. We, we do a little bit of a, a lot. <laughs> How, how big how big a problem is this, Yolanda? I mean, you know, we have a lot of challenges in, in various areas in our community, but but specifically uh, with what you just described, how big a problem is it that you all see on a on a regular basis? Chip, um, 
on a scale of one to 10, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a 15, 20. We are turning people away that need housing. Mm. Um, we see individuals that come, um, you know, they need, like I said, they, they, they um, need food. It's very challenging. And again, I get calls all day, every day of individuals needing housing. So it's, it's real bad. You know, having said that, uh, you know, you, you all were the recipient. There were several grant awards uh, <laughs> given out uh, not too long ago. Uh, and when your organization was singled out, and I believe you, you got the, the highest grant award. I believe it was $1.5 million, uh, which is a lot of money. First of all, congratulations, yeah, on, uh, congratulations yeah. on that. And, 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 and secondly, what does... What does Hope House do with that now? I mean, you have this this money coming. Uh, uh, how do you how do you earmark that? How do you use that? I did hear that was there was going to be some more housing available, but but tell us a little mm-hmm. bit. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, with the housing comes deposits. So we pay their deposits, we pay their app fees, things of that nature. Um, because like you did hear me say that a lot of our clients are living in poverty. Yes. Um, also it helps with our daycare. Our daycare feeds, um, feeds the children free. Mothers don't have to pay anything. We give them the diapers, the milk, the food. Um, that money is going to go a long way and it helps, of course, you know, to pay our teachers to be there, but the children, when you see their faces of how we can help and get them nutritional supplements and everything, the money just goes a long way. You talked about uh, something that uh, we, we all know too well, unfortunately, in our city, which is the poverty uh, rate, uh, which is pretty high here. Uh, and it really is high uh, among children. And you mentioned that, uh, you know, really being able to provide you know, nutritional, uh, you know, substance, sustenance for them and a lot of other things. And and these people who uh, uh, the HIV component of, uh, of this um we do know that that is again that's one of the things that that's a huge problem here in shelby county uh health yeah. department just had put out something on that not too long ago yeah. uh yeah i mean it, so it, it really it really does affect quite a few people does it not yes it does yes it does and one of the things that um we're doing it within our organization since you mentioned the um cluster of hiv uh, reports that we have we're doing more testing now we're going out more trying to reach more places so we can try to, you know, not just say contain it, but, you know, also to say contain it, to try to capture more people, to um, educate them on it, especially the young children. We're, we're just branching out all over. Um, normally, you know, we're in, we are in laundromats. We're in schools mm-hmm. um, and we're doing more of that now. We're going to more schools. We're going to more laundromats. Um, we actually have testing on site now. We're in Walmart. We're testing there. We're just trying our best to do whatever we can to, um, you know, to just be a part of this community and try to embrace it and make sure we stop this infection from going farther and farther. Yeah, it's a very, very serious uh, issue and it, it affects uh, everyone concerned in, in, in the family. Uh, how many more houses, have you all figured out yet how many more houses uh, you can build or provide in terms of shelter uh, with uh, with this money? Because it's a pretty it's a pretty healthy amount. It really is. And it says to me, uh, when you get that kind of money uh, from, from an organization providing grants, it tells me that the work you're doing in our communities is being watched and is being valued. Okay. Um, well, we don't have shelter. Uh, what we what we do is called scattered sites. That means our clients go out and find the housing that they want. The Amen. city of Memphis inspects it. Uh-huh. And um, we're going to add about 10 more clients to our program. Okay. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, we're at 77. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's mm-hmm. the, well, that's that's pretty healthy. So you guys are you guys are busy on a regular basis, aren't you? We are. I do want to say that's the Tiber program. We also have a HUD program that houses thirty people, and we have a YDH program. Right now, they're at thirteen. So we're 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 trying to get these these individuals housed because the need is there. Well, that's over a hundred. That's over a hundred people right there. Um, you know, exactly. in, in, in terms of what you're doing, and and a lot of them come with ready-made families. They need help. They need help, yeah. and I, and I think yeah. what I'm hearing you say through throughout this conversation is, there are a lot of people with a lot of needs, 
and yes. you can provide whatever assistance you can provide for them. You guys do that. That's why it's called the Hope House, and uh, because you're providing hope for a lot of people. And I'm sure that uh, uh, helping them getting on their feet, helping them find a sustainable housing and things like that, I'm sure gratitude is pretty high. Am I correct in that? One of the best things that I love, and I have to say to the clients, they they say, thank you, thank you. And I say, no, it's not me, you know, but it feels good when they are so appreciative. Um, one of the things that I did mention when we do the housing, we also help some individuals pay their utility bill. Oh, so when you tell a client, we're going to pay your $1,300 rent and we're going to give you a $200 utility allowance, the faces, the, they light up, they cry. Um, we just had a um, we just had a family that moved in. They were staying in one of the uh, um, apartments here in Memphis. Mm. I say in Whitehaven. Mm. Um, they came in. They were a part of our daycare, and we had some funding open up right before we got this grant. And um, they came in. Now, Chip, we were able to give them a four bedroom house. Oh, a wow. mother, a father, and two children. They're elated. And it makes me feel so good to see that being that I'm from, you know, I'm from the inner city. I'm from the Lemoyne Garden. So I love to see when they light up like that. It just makes me feel so good. Before you go, if anybody is listening to this or or, or has somebody who, who in need who may want to know more about the Hope House and how to get in contact with you, give us the contact information, please. Okay. My contact number is 901-503-2838. Three, four, and I'm Yolanda Fant. We also have another number that they could call, which is 901-272-2702. But please feel free to call me, and I'll get you to anyone in the agency that you need. Yolanda Fant, housing supervisor for the Hope House. Yolanda, thank you for coming on the show. Congratulations on the Grand Award, and uh, congratulations on the wonderful work that you're doing for so many in need in our community. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. Take care. Uh, All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That wraps up another edition of uh, Real Talk Memphis. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because this was a really good show tonight. Uh, Really, really great information. A lot of good people doing a lot of good things out here. Uh, As Brent plays us out, uh, it's always good to... uh, to, to sit back and, and, and really count our blessings. Uh, uh, there are so many uh, that, that, that are struggling in our city. Uh, we have a lot of problems, and uh, uh, it doesn't do any good to, to, to run from that. Uh, we need to embrace it. We need to understand it. And that's why I bring guests like this on the show, so you understand that there is a need and that we can all help in our own way to take care of those needs. Really appreciate everybody coming on tonight. D.A. Steve Mulroy in person here. Of course, the State Senator Karen Camper and Yolanda Fett. Uh, if you like what we do on this show each and every week, please uh, tell somebody to uh, join in and watch and support what we try to do. Uh, for Bryn, for Lady Lola, and uh, for yours truly, uh, thank you again for uh, helping us do what we do. We really appreciate it. Happy birthday again, boss, Robbie, uh, on this day. Lord says so. We'll be back here next week to try to do it all over again, just a little bit better. So in the meantime and between time, I'm Chip, and we are out. See you soon.